time and location is. One more question. Oh, uh, what if they don't? How's this going to be enforced? In other words, what if people don't do this? Do you have a plan, a friendly amendment for accountability? Uh, I would say they, they need, the, the work groups have to do this within a two week period of time to get to facilitation, because the facilitation is the one who runs the, that they have to submit to facilitation uh, I mean, we, we, their plan. That, uh, Albert's raising the uh, question of enforcement, I suppose. I mean, that's always, I mean, we, you, you make a rule and sometimes it's not enforced. I mean, that's well, just the nature, human nature on some level. I would, I would propose that if they're not reporting back and they're not going through the process that the General Assembly decides upon, then they can't be recognized as a working group. We could vote them out. If the working groups are not accountable for their actions, then there, there would be a process that the GA could, could um, address that. That's the friendly amendment to this. Yes. Good. Okay. Is, uh, is there any, uh, any further uh, concerns? Can, is this going to be uh, written up so that some yes. of us can find yeah. it? Yeah. It has to be now. I didn't know. Sure. We voted on it. Yeah. All right. It has to be. Okay, does anybody have any moral or ethical concerns or concerns for the safety of the occupation based on, these, on this proposal? Would Jesus do this with his disciples? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, everybody in favor? Anybody against? Any blacks? Okay. So there's uh, there's more internal structure now to the working groups. Okay. Finally. Uh, we thank bureaucratic Henry. <laughs> um, are there other proposals? Just to let you know, it's 303. 303. Do we have. What do we have? Left is there anything at the dome at three? Four. 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 I had my uh, workers' comp proposal, Henry. Yeah, we got more proposals. Too. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Okay. It was a proposal. I propose we have more proposals. Second. Uh, I propose the GA have the right to enforce it. <laughs> Albert or Bonnie? Albert, did you have one? Um, I do, but it's in my. Uh, go next. Go to buy next. I, I'm okay, too, Bonnie, it's on Bonnie. my computer. I gotta run. Okay, before I turn to a block of ice. What? <laughs> I will. As soon as she's done, I'll go get it. That's the wind. This is wind chill. Oh, is Bonnie here? Oh, I'm sorry. Bonnie. I've been observing you. And for like weeks now. Did you want to take notes? Uh, Sam was gonna get some gloves and hats for people if, if, if people were getting cold, so she'll be back in a minute. Uh, there's also coffee in there. Hulk on us. You just turned the thing. Did because I couldn't afford the paperwork and all the bureaucratic bullshit. So this is what's happening. Um, the New York State Workers Compensation Board came up with new medical treatment guidelines. So if you suffer from a work-related compensatable injury or illness, you might not be an injured worker now, but things could happen and you too could become injured at your place of employment. Whether you have a previous, present, or a future injury, these new medical treatment guidelines will affect you. It affects, okay, well it's, I'm putting a proposal, this affects everybody in New York State. Anybody that gets injured, if on the job, can't get treatment. I want to see if they want to be a principal. So, Bonnie, the proposal would be like exactly what you want us to do. And then yeah. If people have points of clarification, they want to know why we want to do How do you want to occupy to support this? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Should I support it? Yeah. Well, the, the, the chiropractors union and the doctors are going to Albany on the 7th of February to see Cuomo to try to get these guidelines changed so that people that are chronically ill or permanently injured can get treatment. So I want to know if any if the people here would be willing to support that and come on buses in solidarity to support the physician.
this, see how, how yeah. we would address that? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think in principle is that Occupy supports this kind of uh, work. Uh, I think the, the procedure would be to go through direct action uh, if, if we were going to get a bus to uh, Albany, it would be within the confines of direct action. Um, uh, I don't know exactly if that's a proposal. I mean, it's, I think we, we're in agreement with you. I mean, I think you just have to go through. Uh, you just have to organize it and do it. Yeah. So if I can get the buses, right? Officially endorse it, and then the buses, buses are expensive. Yeah. We're finding out, so <laughs> yeah, but we can work through the details of this. We could yeah. definitely do it. Yeah, because yeah. like doctors, last I do believe, have buses in place. Oh. I do believe. Yeah, but even if it goes through direct action, we need to bring it to the General Assembly to occupy both Can we approve it before? As yeah, we can do that now. We can so vote. Yeah, if we, if people want to do we, what we can do is send it to GA, send it to DA. But we have to do that because they can't do it and come to us. So we're going to set it. The proposal is to set it to direct action. Yeah, the, the proposal then is to, to, to give direct action the authority to prepare this in the name of Occupy Buffalo. Right. That's right. Second. 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 Okay. Favor. Any, any? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's how it's... <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, is anybody opposed to that? So, uh, uh, direct action will now be working on this uh, proposal. I have uh, postcards you can send to the governor, support your post office, put a stamp on it, sign it. I'll have petitions in the tent, in the food tent. Start circulating it that way. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you, you have a proposal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. You ready? Yep. Okay. We have a couple more proposals. Uh, Albert. Give me one second. About a proposal. Um, this came from Occupy Portland. Uh, Portland is asking for a National Day of Nonviolent Direct Action to reclaim, I'm just going to read this, it's not too long, to reclaim our voices and challenge our society's uh, obsession with profit and greed by shutting down the corporations. Um, they're, they're specifically targeting a group, it's called uh, uh, ELEC, and it's the American Legislative Exchange Council, and this council works specifically to um, make sure that a conglomeration of very powerful international corporations have their will um, brought upon our democracy. And uh, there's an entire website d devoted to all the different corporations that are involved in this council and how they work to get ballot initiatives all over the country to subvert our rights. Everything from privatizing all of our education systems so they can be for profit and in their control to uh, subverting uh, voting rights for minorities. Um, there's many, many different levels to this. Um, but basically, uh, uh, Occupy Portland is asking us, and I'm actually doing this on behalf of Michael who couldn't be here today because uh, he's with his children. But he did a lot of research on this, and it's excellent research. And uh, let me just scroll down to the date. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Alec invites legislators to participate for $50. They charge a lot more for the corporations. If a legislature le legislator turns out to not agree with their policies, they kick them out. That's exactly right. These these guys are like bullies. They basically say that uh, you know get on board with us, or we're going to work to overthrow you, get you unelected. So they put a lot of pressure on legislators to. Um, uh, push forward their ballot initiatives. So the day of the natural, uh, the national call to action is February 29th, 2012. Uh, the uh, website that was brought up is called Shut Down Cor uh, Shut Down the Corporations .org. That's Shut Down the Corporations .org. And so basically, what I'm asking us to do is to uh, Occupy Buffalo to stand in support and to ask uh, and to be to vote our support for this action and to ha and to send this to DA to uh, figure out a direct action that we could all do together. So um, so so specifically, I propose that Occupy Buffalo 
support the National Day of Action to shut down the corporations on February 29, 2012, and that direct action take up uh, creatively some action that we could do on that day. And there are very specific corporations that I have information on that we could target. I second it. Second. second. Okay, are there any questions uh, about this proposal? Are there any concerns about this proposal? Uh, like the last proposal, it's the same process of consensus agreement and then and then the details will be worked out in GA. It's just your point of information. D yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, D There's a lot of A's. So all the point of information and Alex actually writes laws that legislators bring to their states, well, and that's why so many states are enacting the same laws. That's correct. They're written by Alex. That's right. Again, it's, it's, in the it's in the spirit of Occupy, it's just a matter of process. Um, so, yeah, it was any friendly amendments to this? And no further discussion. So, okay, everybody in favor? Uh, blocks. Shut okay, down so corporation. Okay. All right. Shut down Occupy will Buffalo will support Portland Occupy and will shut down the corporations. Details worked on in the DA. Thank you. Uh, Eric and Nigel and this is John's handwriting. I I think it's a C. Somebody with a C. <laughs> Oh, those numbers? Okay, there's a couple short proposals and uh, a, a more involved proposal later, but uh, Eric and Nigel, is Eric here? What's your handwriting? Yeah. Uh, Eric, Nigel, and uh, Kurt. Kurt. Sarah. Just for proposals. I don't have. A okay. Oh. Is there an Eric here? Good. I'm sorry. Is Eric. Wait, Nigel. Um, what? Eric G. Is it Eric? Uh, okay. No, it was Eric. Um, yeah, he's coming. Is Eric? No, no. Oh, he's you didn't have one? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Though. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there's two more proposals. Then one is seems like there's seven points to it. Uh, oh, so. Two. Sorry, that's okay. Oh. Okay, so Nigel and then Darren. So, um, I don't know if everyone caught what I said earlier on Soapbox, uh, but pretty much the same thing. I want to propose a political party working group to get involved with local politics in Buffalo and around Buffalo. Um, first meeting would be today. Point of contact would be me. I can provide my contact information to uh, whomever necessary. Um, but uh, that's about it. Are there any questions about what I mean by a political party working group? Yeah. Yeah. Could you just more clearly state what what your plans are to as far as getting involved in local politics and how you're trying to connect? Yeah. Um, basically, I want to develop a platform for a political party based on the practices and philosophy of occupations. I want to extend those to local communities so that we can meet uh, local concerns in the same manner that we uh, treat this by uh, consensus. Um, so, basically, I want to conduct a political eh, a political campaign. Uh, without the financial backing by the one percent that uh, they're traditionally accompanied by. So are you running a candidate? Um, not as of yet. I just want to construct the platform on which we could run a candidate at this point. Is it would it just be local, or would you uh, have thoughts of extending to other areas like Rochester and other nearby municipalities? That's uh, definitely something that could be happening in the future. I, I mean, at this point, I'm just looking at it locally. That would be the easiest way. I'm not saying that we run for president immediately. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, definitely open to expansion. So the, the purpose and function of the working group is to 
you said that. Assemble basically an ideal political party that represents Occupy in the 99 and, and, and determine what that would be and then basically come back to GA in the future if anything beyond that wants to be done. Uh, more or less, I'd like to uh, draw on everyone here and everyone in the surrounding communities for a pool of candidates so that we're running people who are actually for us because they're from the community rather than relying on endorsing some, you know, career politician. Okay, before you made your proposal, did you uh, go over to people personally and ask to get a temperature check on your proposal? Did you, did you, do, did you do a pre or pre up? Oh yeah, I, I was up here earlier on the soapbox before the uh, recent um, proposal about working groups and procedure for establishing them. So I just wanted to come up and reiterate that uh, and go by the procedure that was just established. What was the temperature check? How, uh, the temperature, know, it, it went pretty well. I got good. cheered. Good. Awesome. I second. Cool. Can we second this? So, the, so the, 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 hold on. There's a... Nigel is asking to form a work for the GA to approve a working group to explore the possibility of political uh, political involvement. Political involvement. Um, my understanding of Occupy is it is a political involvement. I, I'm I'm trying to understand how this would be more specific. Specifically in the sphere of actually running a candidate rather than like endorsing any legislation or any other candidate of any other party. So it seems that uh, uh, Nigel wants to form a working group to uh, create a, a political party f of of Occupy. So to make the Occupy a political party, it seems to me. Um, yeah. Not, not me. <laughs> yeah. It seems like something that needs a lot of discussion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the for. for the, what, what uh, exactly a working group, I mean, uh, what exactly a political party for Occupy would entail? There, there's, um, we, we just have to go around here and take some, we'll just go right around here and, and take all the, uh, Comments. Uh, Why don't you, uh, uh, Nick, to the person, tell them who they are. Tell me who's first. Stack. Uh, can you just go right around and you and, tell me? And okay, I'll down. Eric, Vicky, uh, Nigel, John, uh, Chris, Henry, uh, Albert. We need to have discussion about this. Um, What's your name? Christina Albert. You're on the stack, but. I like the idea. I mean, we're all clearly very unhappy with basically every elected leader out there, for the most part. Um, so, asking the parties to just be better, you know, isn't necessarily a viable solution. As far as a working group, uh, I think we need to clearly state what the end product will be, because, you know, if this is going to end up in a concrete platform for a, for a party member, effectively that would be representing what the political outcome is of the movement, which, which wouldn't be something that like a specific committee should, should determine and finalize without, without authorization. I mean, I, I do think that you know, we should explore this type of committee for the function of a discussion because you know, even abstract terms beyond policy, you know, do we want political candidates to directly, you know, poll their, their constituents? Do we, do we want more direct democracy? Do we want a party that engages, you know, with it, with the people who elected? So, I, I mean, I, I think that there could be benefit from a discussion. We should really establish and work out what this group is going to be. But. Okay. There's a, there's a stack. It's going, well, let... Can I address that? Yeah. Uh, I, I think we there's a lot of uh, concerns that, we, that a lot of people have shown uh, they want to speak on this issue. So I, I think we're going to take a stack. Uh, there's a, a number of people who want to speak on this, and then we can ask Nigel to address some of those concerns, and then we can go from there. But we need to have some input from all the people that raise their hand. No, we have a stack. Uh, you're on the stack, Chris, and you, you'll be on the stack. So it's going. I think it's Vicky Nigel. It's going around here. Here and So we had Eric first. Okay. So Vicky is next. Then I have Nigel, John, Chris, Henry, Christina, Albert. If there's anyone who's not on stack, please uh, let me know now. I would just make the, the simple suggestion that 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your idea and initiative and suggest that a great place to talk about it would be at strategic planning to, because I think that is a big part of the, the overall scheme and it should be factored in whether it work with how it helps us or what might what way it might work best hello yeah I was uh, listening to public radio uh, about a month ago and they had uh, focus was the occupiers in Chicago and what they are doing there and the uh, spokesperson for that movement did say that they were looking at forming a political party in Chicago to run some candidates where they feel that they can you know have an impact on those various communities I am definitely in support of having some form of political party but keeping the career politicians out and finding a real true candidates to help our communities Stack, stack, uh, push, I think I was uh, push on the stack. Uh, so that was my one? Yes. Okay, next is John. I have, let me just say, John, Chris, Henry, Christina, Albert, and Alex. All right, uh, I just wanted to say that um, although I'm not opposed to occupiers running for office, I am fundamentally opposed to any kind of Occupy party. I would like to encourage everyone, and I mean everyone in this group, to run for whatever office that you believe that you can fill, uh, to use our political system to leverage the power of people that we have and the attention that we have to draw attention to people who I believe are worthy of political office. But as far as structuring that as a working group or as a political party, I would like to say I'm fundamentally opposed to that and add a point of information that as a nonprofit organization um, that, that we cannot, as Occupy Buffalo, become a political party without you know, continuing to uh, change our, our status. I'll clarify. Okay. Yeah, let's hear some more. Uh, how do Stack? people feel about this? Pro yeah, let's go to Stack. Um, this is going to take a while. Are people comfortable with continuing yeah. this discussion? I move to continue five more minutes of discussion. Second Second it. Second it. It's important. Let, this is an, let's keep talking. Let, uh, him, let him clarify, and I'll remember. Hold on. No, uh, let, let's hear some more. Some more input. Uh, now, so who's on Stack? We have Chris, Henry, Christina, Albert, Alex, Jim. Chris, you're up Henry. Chris, that is. Did you want to wait? Or well, I, I thought I'd let him clarify and then I'd go. But. So, no, were no, you, was it this Chris? Chris yeah, w. just Chris w. Okay, so you're next. I'm, I'm, we're going to hear some concerns. I'm going to try to summarize some of it. Then, we're going to hear from the original proposal. That seems to be a, a logical and a reasonable way to do it. So, do uh, you, you want to speak now or you want to go, Henry? Henry, go ahead. All right, so I think having a discussion about how we influence and get involved in politics is great. We talk about inform, reform, transform. Well, the refor reformation process, we're already working with Move to Amend. Move to Amend is a separate group that is trying to amend the Constitution and Occupy Buffalo is giving our support. So we are not directly trying to amend the Constitution, but we are supporting an organization that is. So that's one structure that we have already. I'm totally okay with having a working group that is like continually seeking ways to influence and transform the political system and to look for different ways of involvement. I fully support that. My concern is with actually formulating a political candidate or party out of the Occupy movement. So like, I really enjoy the relationship that we have to other political candidates and that we have with Move to Amend, because those are separate groups that have their own specific agenda, and we're collaborating with those groups. To have a candidate or a political party come out of the Occupy movement, I feel quite skeptical about that. So as far as discussion and political involvement, I'm all about it. For a specific candidate or political party, it makes me skeptical. I think it's great that we'll have a committee to uh, discuss politics, politicians. I, I think that's what we're all about. And that would be useful in, in uh, detailing various positions that, that uh, people take so that we can all go out and be well informed and know what we're talking about when we talk to the public. So if the committee uh, were to uh, include analysis <coughs> of various uh, personalities and parties, etc., then I think that would be great as far as uh, developing a party of our own or a candidate of our own. I believe there's legal issues involved for us. 
So um, we would actually have to discuss it with the legal department. And, and I think it'd be great to have a committee to raise those very questions that could go to a legal department. Without having such a committee, we wouldn't be raising the, qu the questions to go to legal with. So uh, with that, I give the mic back to yourself. <laughs> Next is Christina, Albert, Alex, Jim, and then Mindy. Anyone else? I think that the idea is valid. I definitely give props to you. Um, I think that one of the fundamental parts is involvement in politics and in getting people aware of what's going on in Buffalo um, in that building in the surrounding lines, you know. So for that, I think it's really important. But as far as electing one official, I think that that's all of us. I think that we all need to stand up and take responsibility for that. So. I want to talk about a few points here. Number one, um, is it just possible to have a political party out of the Occupy Movement? Absolutely. We could form a PAC. We absolutely could legally have one. I'm fundamentally opposed to it for many strategic reasons. One, it's directly in opposition to our highest and most dearly held value, which is direct democratic participation. The second you start electing representatives, you have just given up on your core value. So. I would, I'm absolutely fundamentally opposed to a party coming out of the Occupy movement. But, having said that, I'm, at, I'm in complete agreement that we do need to have a political working group. I think that if we establish that today, and I may be mistaken if that's what you're proposing, but if, if it is, I would support it if um, it worked closely with direct action and strategic planning. I think it couldn't, it's the kind of thing that could go out on its own if it wasn't working closely. Direct action, strategic planning work very closely together it's because we have a common bond and I think this would be kind of like a triumphant, you know, I think that, that would be a very important part. Um, I think there's a lot of things to work on in terms of uh, political um, awareness, values, and actions in terms of who we can support, what politicians. I mean, I think we could we could literally work on that as we go. But in terms of turning it into a party, it really does fundamentally change the structure of this organization and what we're doing. We're, we're a grassroots, horizontal, leaderless movement, and I support us staying that way. That's our core values. I want to be on stack yet. Karen? Okay, for Stack, we got uh, Alex, Jim, Mindy, Eric, and now Sam. Alex, Jim, Mindy, Eric, Sam. Basically, I. Speaking of the microphone. Basically, I don't have much to say, but I think uh, this is a uh, proposition is too big and uh, not specific and it's difficult to make decisions. I suggest that uh, by the next year that there are. Notes with pointers, what what exactly you're proposing, how you're going to achieve it, and uh, this this can be distributed to my people so that they can read and uh, think about it. And uh, my understanding is people want to run it by the words too. Whatever whatever you're proposing, they want to to to, to get a food from the legal team, and uh, then 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 we will have better basis for decision making the next time. Thank you. Jim, Mindy, Eric, Sam. Thank you. I'm Jim, and my ideas on this are uh, for a long time. I've always wished for another party, and the party would really be based on values and value. So actually, basically, it would be the values of the people who care and care about other people and want things to be really right because they're right. And also, when you spend a dollar, it was the value of a dollar for a dollar. I could give anybody a $100 bill and no one cared if they gave me their $100 bill if you still had $100 when you were done. So it's never bad to pay for something if it's worth it, but if it's not worth it, then you feel ripped off. So the value is the key. And on the other side of the whole thing is I think that anytime we would put something that would allow the 1%, the greedy corporate people and lead it in the 1%, which are part of that little elephant tribe, they would trample us and destroy us if they got in there. And so as much as we might not like the whole party system thing, is if one party got in, we'd get damaged a lot more than another. So I always think that if you can take out the worst of the bunch, we'll take the next one on and we'll try to make change and make it better. And if we can make it better, you know, okay, if not, we work on them hard, but I'm not for taking votes away from the person that might be the one that's saving your ass. You know? 
try to keep the comments to the specific proposal. Um, so I'm opposed. That was a, a, that was mine. Was bottom line was opposed. Bottom line was uh, against. Um, it's been yeah. five minutes. Do we, we want to keep it? The, the, there's a stack. Uh, I think it's fair to honor the people that are on stack. And then when we get to that point, we have to hear back from. Uh, we have to continue this discussion. Uh, is, does anybody? Know? Well, let's just continue. You could table it too, because this sound, this could go on for a long time. But we could you know, honor the stack. Too. We should honor the stack. Honor the stack. Let, let's honor the stack, and then at that moment, we'll we'll kind of see where we are just be in terms order. of continuing. Thank you. Um, I'd like to move. Minty, Eric, and Sam. Minty. Hey. Okay. So I'm opposed, and I'll tell you why. I've been doing outreach in the community and we've spoken with a number of groups that are only able to work with us because we are bipartisan, uh, nonpartisan. We're a nonpartisan group. If we were to, you know, uh, consecrate some sort of party out of this, uh, we would really be, I believe, um, barring ourselves, we'd be uh, holding ourselves back from uh, certain types of people, people that, you know, may not want to be affiliated with a party, so to speak. Um, I think that the idea of, of people rising up and becoming leaders that uh, sympathize with our group, that's not, that's not a bad idea, but to actually label it, it's, I know that, let me think of my words. Okay. Why become part of the system that we're trying to reform? That's all I have to say. Eric and Sam. I mean, I, everyone likes, I think it's every, everyone is in agreement that, um, you know, we want to have some sort of idea of what, you know, people who represent us, you know, what their policies are. I think, I think the word party rubs people off long, on, in, in the wrong way because it symbolizes, you know, free power. Free, sort of an excuse to consolidate and you know, sort of get lazy with the because you're an established party. And 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 yes, Occupy obviously is not the type of would not be the type of party to let a candidate slap. But there there, there is a general. Just, I feel like it's rubbing people the wrong way. I, I mean, I I don't know. I, I don't think that you know this should just be overlooked because you know, there has been a lot of discussion about you know. What exactly do our candidates stand for? What do we want our candidates to stand for? I mean, this this is, I mean, people mention strategic planning. I mean, sort of those me medium, long term, uh, medium term goals at least is, you know, what are the policies that we want our representatives to have? I mean, a lot of focus has been on specific ones that are of importance, but there's no reason that, you know, other things should be given weight and we shouldn't push, strive for a general political philosophy. So, I mean, me, maybe working on a political party isn't a best idea. It, it, is it the, the, something that's going to pass right now? But maybe you know, work, a working group to discuss political philosophy. I mean, I'm just like I, I, I feel like this shouldn't just be tabled because you know people are unsteady about you know what it sounds like or how it feels like. Because you know, we all agree that it's important and that. You know, we want legislative change, and you know, we should really discuss what we want. You know, our democracy to lead to. Yeah. So, the, the, that, that, that's that's my opinion, and you know, I, I don't think that you know, because it's important. Just saying whatever. I'm against this. I'll tell you why. First of all, as Mindy stated, we have gone and spoken with different community groups that can only participate with Occupy. Um, it's an important thing. But look, let me let me say that. Thank you. Um, we have we have very good and positive intentions here. Um, but 
I guess, as in all, uh, in a lot of human endeavors, it takes a while for us to catch up with our best intentions. And like one of the things that uh, I've realized doing this, being involved in Occupy Buffalo, um, is that some of the, cl well, in general, problems that we have in our society express themselves here. We are a microcosm, and so we represent a larger society. Um, and among those problems are problems of class, problems of sexism, problems of racism. Um, now, intellectual discussions is, is um, a domain of life that we give deference to when people get the right kind of certification, qualification, and we treat them differently than we treat everyday people. Um, but what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get as many voices as possible to weigh in on issues of justice that really rightly concern all of us. And it's a measure of our own progress, the extent to which we're able to show respect uh, and give our attention, our deepest attention, to all people, regardless of whether they have a doctor in front of their uh, name instead of a MR or Mr. or a Mrs. Um, uh, that he's taking empty lots and turning them into food producing farms. Um, he's going to come and he's going to talk about opting out. Um, the title of that is Farmers and Builders Opt Out. I highly recommend it. Um, if you want more information, go to the website Farmers and Builders. Um, you can go to our event page. There's a link to it um, on the event page on, on Facebook. Okay, the next week, next Saturday, Laura and Sarah Haeckel will be giving a talk about self-responsive Plato. And I want this to be the first in a series of talks that address canonical thinkers. Right? So the idea of justice is an old and, 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 and noble idea in our culture. And Plato is one of the most important figures in this long 2,000 year Western tradition. And he had some powerful ideas about justice. These ancient folks, when they talked about justice, it was a personal virtue. And this talk is going to focus on that idea. Aristotle, the Aristotle talk, I'm going to get into the notion of distributive justice. Uh, and I'm going to talk about his concept of natural slaves. Um, in March, I'm going to talk about Mahavera, who is the founder of um, the notion of Ahisma and the Jain religion. So we'll try to have for you some um, very important philosopher, uh, religious leader, who has given a foundational idea that contributes to the way we today think about the notion of justice. Um, okay, so today's talk is entitled Plato's Ideal of Justice as Self-Mastery and His Critiques of oligarchy, democracy, and tyranny. Okay, so what's that? He didn't like anything. <laughs> Plato didn't like anything. Democracy, tyranny, and oligarchy isn't that a bad cover? Uh, he, you know, that's a perfect place to start. I want to mention and make it very clear that Plato lived in a democracy. Well, what they thought was a democracy. Okay. Um, uh, they excluded a lot of people in their conception. But amongst the power brokers that existed at the time, what they were doing in being democratic was extremely radical. Um, and I think it bears um, reflecting 